No, there's no presentation. I prefer to speak rather than make a presentation, so I can have a direct eye contact with you all the people. <laughs> well, first time I'm seeing that the people are wide awake and the attendance is more than 50%, almost 70%. So thank you very much for that. Uh, it's a difficult topic to say that has NABIT improved or not? And let me tell you that I was one of the first assessors with NABIT. And what were the follies? So obviously you know that I'm not very much in favor of NABIT being enforced the way it is being done today. Though it was a very good decision taken by the ministry to improve upon the quality of the EIA by putting some sort of a regulatory agency, if I can call it, something similar to what you have IRDA. They have issued an agency which will uh, tell the consultant how the EIA should be done, who are the people who will do the EIA. But the main question here is, is NABET itself competent to check EIA? The people who are there at NABET, have they any time than the EIA themselves? And I'm saying based on my own experience because I'm the guy who probably I can take the credit that I started the EIA here way back in 1989, much before the notification came in 1994. And by the way, EIAs were being done prior to 94, but they were limited only to the government projects, the projects funded by the state or the central governments, not by the private entrepreneurs. Private things came only in 94. It was doing pretty well. Some improvement has taken place. Very minor improvement in the quality of EIA. The reason being, everybody knows that, as uh, Mr. Shekhar Tamani said, EIA is my bread and butter. But the question is that if the cost of the EIA is less than the cost of what the consultant quotes, what is the quality we can expect? Now let me tell you that the EIS charges which I have been paying, I was a global head for an environment function in a large corporate, was around something like 25 to 35 lakhs, it's starting from 1993 onward. And today, the EIA cost, what the people are quoting, hold your breath, three lakhs. Three lakhs for construction EIA. Can it be done? And now it, they come, inspect, certify. I'm advisor to one of the consultants. And I must say thank you to Mr. Rajiv that at least he has appreciated that the quality of the EIA, what is coming from your company, Mr. Shekhar Dawane, is better than others. Maybe we have improved upon because of the knowledgeable people like from ex Navy people are there with them who have been guiding them for doing the EIS. But the question here is, if you make everything mandatory, people have normal tendency, let's not follow that. Try to find the shortcuts. My personal opinion, as a professional in the line who has spent almost 43 years now in the line, then let's make it not mandatory, but voluntary. Voluntary like what you have ISO, what you have ISI. If you see that uh, you yourself will go to buy a product, which is having an ISI mark, or you yourself will go to a company which will have an ISO certification. If that is the case, probably over the period of time, the consultant which are, let me say, if I can say, printing the reports, will automatically will be eliminated because the committees where people like uh, Apurva have been a member or uh, Dr. Neelama has been a member, they will automatically screen out which are the report as good, and they will start really screening the reports using the microscope. Not even the reading lens, but the microscope that could be something wrong with these reports. Let's look into it. If that is done, probably that's my personal opinion, because I don't represent any company as such, but then uh, if that can be done, the quality of the EIA definitely can be improved. Other thing is, that let the project proponent, as uh, Mr. Rajiv in the morning suggested, let all the consultants join together, request a sort of a meeting with the CRDI, that's the 
constructor uh, agency sort of thing or a conglomerate and then sit together. That look here, like the way you do for the any of the plot or the water permission or the uh, sewage permission or the power supply permission, you start thinking on the environmental issues also. And let me tell you, I mean, those who are young professionals, that your line is pretty good. Pretty good in the sense that if you get involved right from the beginning of a project, you will save the money for where, whichever company you are working. I have seen it myself with a small organization of a single man entity. When I left, it was almost about 20, 20 odd guys. And no entrepreneur or no pri private company will employ the people if they are not making money for them. Tangibly, intangibly, we make the money intangibly for them. Again, coming back to the issue of the quality in terms of, in my opinion, if our assessors themselves are assessed for the, this type of activity and they are selected based on that, probably the qualities can be improved because today what is happening, they have been given a mandate, this is the way you have to carry out the assessment. SSE is also aware what he is going to ask. So he's also preparing. And when the assessor comes, everything is honky dairy and everybody gets assessment. If both the things are followed, in my opinion, the quality can be improved with the same set of NABIT people, provided if it is made only voluntary. That's the only thing which I have to say. Any more points, please? Many more, many more. Any more, any more. Okay. Oh, oh, let's say if I can say on the EIA process. EIA, EIA process. Like uh, uh, <laughs> Professor Niramaya said about the EIA, really speaking, there are all positives. Believe it, there are positive, there are positive sides of the EIA. For the because I have my own main experience has been limited to the industrial exposure building. I have been in a very small period of time, maybe just about two years. But if you do the EIA, project EIA, right in the beginning of the project, believe it, it saves you many things. Many things I can count it. It can save you water. It can utilize the maximum potential of the land also. Because you as an environmental engineer or an environmental professional, based on what has been listed in the notification, will try to maximize the use in terms of the per capita production. Even in case of the environment, you can't survive only with the environment. You need to have the money to save the environment. And the money doesn't come by talking. Money will come only by the business. So let the development has to take place. But development has to be in conjunction with the environment, sustainable way, which people like those who are sitting here, the young generation, they can really prove it. They can rip Sir, if you can put it on the silent mode. Because my so let me again come back to so in you in case like what uh, Mrs. Jaga was saying in the morning that they come at the end, far end, but in case of the industry, it is not the case because he cannot take a risk for putting so much of investment, waiting for the environment. So the first thing is that they start doing the environment clearance process first. Initially, they will start as a point of, oh, this is one of the requirements, I have to But later on, when the, as an environmental engineer, you start proving that, yes, you are making a business sense for them, which came out of the EIA process itself. Earlier, before 94, the private industries were not doing the EIA, leaving aside the large business houses because there were many other stakes involved and the pollution control boards were asking them for many information which was being generated, not in the name of EIA, but in the name of pollution control. But it was mandatorily was EIA on a piece of paper. So things came out beautifully well, and we have seen, at least I have seen it, the utilization of the resource to the best possible extent, reduction in the waste coming out of the plant, recovery of the waste, solid waste for recycle. This all came out of EIA process only. But morning session, we talked about, uh, if Rakesh Kumar is here, he will not like it. But then they said, 
regional EIA or the program EIA? My question could be, would be, sir, if the project EIA takes about one year to complete, how much time will that take? If that is done, in a reasonable time, probably everybody will be able to wait, even including the builder lobby also, including the industry guy also, but provided there has to be a time frame. Now, based on last 20 years experience in a business house, sorry, we can't say what is the time frame for the EIA, though it is given a notification that deemed clearance if you don't get the document after 105 days from the date of submission of all information. Let it be furthermore modified that the minutes of meeting of SEAC or EAC or SEIA, -S if you don't get the document, this is the clearance. What happens is in all the cases, clearance is not there, he doesn't get the fund. He doesn't get the fund, the project gets stuck up. Who pays for the project? is the people who are sitting here really speaking, because their own money which has been invested there through the banks. So if that is there, your stakes will be solved, and if this can go as a recommendation, not deemed clearance in 105 days, if it is not coming, the minutes of meeting itself, because it comes with all the conditions there, this is only replicated in the document which is coming from the department, will be treated as the environment clearance. The problem could be solved. That's all, doubt. 